Hi there. The question I want to ask today is this. Is the coronavirus ageist, sexist, and racist? The answers are no, no, and no. However, those different groups are reacting differently to the virus, so it gives the impression that this little booger is bigoted. Now, if you go back to episode four, where I explained to you how viruses infect a host and proliferate, you'll, you'll know that viruses are an equal opportunity pathogen. And if you look at the data coming out of New York City, very interesting, the hot spot, right, in the country, you'll see that the number of cases by age is fairly uniform, slight variations, but fairly uniform. But look at the deaths. Whoa, it spikes at the older age groups, right? So if you look at places like Arizona and New Jersey that are giving us great data by age, you'll see that about 78% of the deaths are among people 65 years and older, 78%. And if you look at Italy, the data coming out of there, 90% of all the deaths are among people 60 years old and older, 90%, nine out of every 10. Now, of course, these deaths are attributed to the virus, but in fact, these folks, for the most part, were struggling with one thing or another uh, before the virus struck. So things like hypertension, heart disease, obesity, diabetes, I have more to say about that in a minute. So the virus for them was the last straw. Okay, so now let's look at sex differences, okay? Again, let's look at the hot spot in New York City. Look at this graph. For every 55 women who are dying from the virus, nearly 100 men are dying. That's almost twice as much. And if you, if you look at the disparity uh, among men and women, it's, it's all over the world. You see this difference among men and women, and the question is why? Well, there are some behavioral differences. We guys tend to be less compliant than women. Hate to say it, you know, we, we won't wash our hands like we're told necessarily. And we're, we're known, men are known to be greater risk takers. So, you know, we're more likely to defy a quarantine or we're less likely to go to the doctor. We're feeling down. We want to kind of tough it out. So those are the behavioral differences, but those aren't the only ones. There are other factors, biological differences. For example, we know that estrogen, the female hormone, is very immuno-enhancing. It enhances the immune system. And we also know that testosterone tends to act as an immunosuppressant. It suppresses the immune system. But there's something else. This is the big one. What we've learned over the years is that our immune systems are controlled to a very large degree by our sex chromosomes, X and Y. Remember that from biology class? Okay. So what I want you to do is think of X as commanding an elite army. Navy SEALs, Army Rangers, whatever, special forces, right? And the Y chromosome commands a kind of ragtag army of misfits. Oh, here's the thing. Women have XX. They have double the elite army. We guys got one elite army and one kind of ragtag army of misfits. We're XY. So that we don't have the... the the powerful immune system that women have. And you might wonder why. Why is it that men have immune systems that are not as strong overall as women? And there's a lot of speculation. We, we honestly don't know in science. But one of the speculations is that women can get pregnant. And pregnant women need extra protection. And that's why they have the XX. They have double the elite army. So that's, that's very, very interesting. One other thing is that because we guys have uh, weaker immune systems, we're more likely to have pre-existing conditions, hypertension, heart disease, and so forth, when the virus strikes. And that's why we're seeing this increased mortality among men over women. OK, finally, racial differences. Um, the data is not great, and that's actually one of the complaints right now. But hopefully in the next couple of weeks we'll be getting more data so we can get a clearer picture of the racial disparities. If you look at a place like Massachusetts, where I used to live when I was teaching at Harvard, um, the cases among races are pretty proportional to their population, whites, Hispanics, blacks, right? But in nearly every other state, we're talking New York, Michigan, Louisiana, Illinois, the disparities are huge. People of color are succumbing 
more to the virus than their white counterparts. And so the question is why? Why would that be? Well, there's, again, with, as with men, a combination of factors, including, sad to say, inevitably discrimination. But there's also poverty. For example, um, the Kaiser Family Foundation did a study, and they found that 22% of black Americans are in poverty versus 9% of white Americans. It's a big difference. And what that means is you can't afford to buy healthy food. Uh, you, you ride on public transportation, so you're rubbing elbows with other people and are more likely to become infected. You're also more likely, if you're in poverty, to be working menial jobs, uh, like in hospitals, scrubbing the floors and stuff like that. Again, that puts you at greater risk of infection. So that's, that's one factor. Um, there's also this other factor of housing where you have multi-generations living in the same place in a tight quarters, like in the projects, the public housing. And according to the latest Pew Research, 26% um, of black Americans are living in such housing versus 16% of whites. Again, big difference. Uh, puts you at greater risk of becoming infected. So if there's like one person test positive, where are you going to go? You're cramped in one place. But there are also biological differences, and this is where it gets a little bit interesting as well. That is to say, w where we know that blacks and Hispanics are more susceptible to certain afflictions, and so they have pre-existing illnesses. When the virus strikes, they're more vulnerable. So, for example, high on the list is hypertension. 41% of black Americans have hypertension, 41%, versus 27% of white Americans. We don't know exactly why we're still exploring that difference, um, but we do have some evidence that black Americans have a gene that makes them more sensitive to salt. So just a half a teaspoon of salt can make your blood pressure rise. So that puts them at greater risk of having hypertension, pre-existing illness, and therefore succumbing to the virus. So that's, that's one possibility. Another thing, too, on hypertension is that we know for, uh, from a great deal of research that black Americans react differently than white Americans to hypertension medication. So you can give the same medication to a white person and to a black person, they'll react differently. That complicates things, all right? There's also um, diabetes, differences in diabetes. Do you know that uh, black Americans and Hispanic Americans, and I'm Hispanic, so I can vouch for this uh, anecdotally, um, we have twice the chance, we have twice the risk of becoming diabetic, lots of diabetes in my family, than white Americans. And again, that puts you at greater risk, pre-existing illness, you get the virus, boom, you're hit hard. And finally, uh, obesity. There's huge differences in obesity. Um, do you know in the United States, f blacks have 51% more chance and Hispanics have 21% more chance of being obese than whites. And again, obesity is a pre-existing affliction. And again, obesity across the board in the United States, we're just a fat country. And that puts us at greater risk as well. All right, so as the data comes in, I'll keep an eye on it. I'm looking at the data very carefully, scrutinizing it to see if we can glean anything. But here's my closing thought. You know, scientifically, it is important for us to kind of slice and dice the data this way, to kind of divide up the data um, across age groups, male and female, races. But we have to be careful not to let that creep over into our social relationships, that, that we have to be careful not to let it divide us socially. There is no one who is immune from this virus. I don't care, young or old, black, white, brown, male, female, no one is immune. No one is more important than anybody else. My dad raised me to believe that. We're all, every life is precious and every life is worth saving. And so we're all in this together. We're all in this together. And it's together that we are going to conquer this thing, and not only conquer it, my friend, but we're going to come out stronger on the other end as long as we don't divide ourselves and that we don't allow this virus to divide us, not by age, 
not by sex, not by race. Okay? Together. Strong together. All right. Stay safe, stay strong, and above all, stay positive. Stay positive.